This is mountain biking. Dear viewers, all the people on that side of the lens, you don't even know how much I've been dreaming of sharing this experience with thousands of people around the world. And now it's possible. When I was 12 years old, almost 26 years ago, I've been riding through this little hill, this little mountain, thinking about how can we share this amazing thing with other people. Now we've got internet, now we've got YouTube and we can make a great use of it. So I'm happy to share with you what mountain biking is. This video will not only show you how beautiful mountain biking is, but also where your mountain bike can really take you and what type of terrains you can easily go through. You will also learn a lot of technique. Mountain biking, mountain bike, mountain bike. That's the bike which will take you to the mountains. It will be great for climbing. It will be awesome for going down the hill. And depending on the type of mountain bike you're gonna choose, it will be amazing on the rocks, on some routes, on the mud, on steep, steep climbs and, and, and descents. It will be great cornering machine. Awesome bike if you learn these techniques. Hmm. What shall we start with? I'm here on the mountain. This mountain is called Bismarck Mountain. Uh, the name comes from the Germans. And I've got downhill, 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 downhill. Nothing but descents. And before you get to the mountain, you actually have to climb. So let's learn how to climb on your mountain bike. And yes, in order to actually be able to climb, you need some level of the fitness. But you don't need to worry, just start with one, two minutes, even 30 seconds, easy climbs and your body will learn, your body will know what do you really re require of it. Ha! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Java. And the uphills which were at the beginning hard as, <gasps> I hate sick biker, I hate mountain biking after a couple of weeks will be very easy. You will, you will feel as if you were flying up the hill. And when we've got the engine already, now we can learn some skills. What should we start with? Let's just find some nice mountain to climb. I think uh, that one is cool. That one far, far ahead, just at the horizon, that's the Śnieżka. Śnieżka, we say Śnieżka in, in Polish. Wonderful mountain. There was the um, uphill race a couple of weeks ago. Once the bike changes its position, as the incline uh, of the uphill changes, our position on the bike changes as well, so that we need to readjust it. How to do it? Feel the rear wheel. I would say feel the rear wheel. As long as your front wheel is still staying on the ground and you feel the, the uh, optimum balance on the rear wheel, it means your position is very good. Some riders will move closer to the tip of the saddle and also lean downwards a little bit with the upper body so that the center of gravity will be lower. In this way we keep our front wheel still on the ground and they feel just efficient in that position. In my case sometimes I would move to the front, sometimes I just stay on the saddle as I would ride on the flat ground and just bend my elbows and go a little bit down with my torso and still feeling good traction on the rear wheel. If you climb a lot on your bike, you might notice that probably the tip of your saddle is a little bit too high and readjusting the saddle just a little bit, tiny bit, uh, would do a lot of good work for you, as long as you don't get too much stress on your arms. Dane, robisz to! Robisz to, nie? O, 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 tak blisko! <laughs> Jak się czujesz? Wyłącz to. Nie. Wyłącz to. <laughs> to się skasuje, dobra, to, się, to się wytnie. Why the gearing is so important? Because first, if you start off with too high gear, 
higher gear means harder gear if you start hard you're gonna drain your muscles as you get to the top and maybe you have to walk which is not that nice thing but if you start with the lower gearing just spinning nicely that will be very good for you and for your legs and lungs the lower gearing will also teach you to spin with higher cadence maybe on the climbs maybe about 70 rpms or so and higher cadence means that you get the balance you you push the pedals more evenly and that means more traction for your wheel, rear wheel so just uh, experiment with with some gearing see what is too hard what is maybe just too fast for you but look at for example chris Froome. okay other example Yolanda Neff, mountain biking, wonderful rider, Maya Boschowska, our Polish rider. But I think Yolanda Neff has super high uh, cadence. You can go lower, like Maya, for example, uh, and see how even it, it is, how, how efficient it feels, and how much control you've got over the rear wheel. When to use the lockout on your suspension? It might be full suspension bike, can be just a hardtail. It's not that obvious that you would only use the lockout on the flat sections on different tracks uh, or on the uphill because this uphill here is pretty technical it's got quite a few sharp uh, rocks thus I'm running the open suspension right now when I would use the lockout for sure is when I go off the saddle I want to change my position or just power if I wanted to take over the rider ahead of me I would just use the lockout right now when you're standing on the pedals like this suspension is locked it feels very stiff you don't waste energy like right now but when it becomes really technical it's now open and see all these rocks some are very sharp and you can actually bottom out your tire and get a flat get a puncture so right now open suspension so don't just do it automatically think what kind of terrain it is and how will you benefit from running open suspension and now we are approaching very technical slippery drop let's do it my suspension is open boom and we did it great so on the part like this one i felt my fork just nicely smoothly going over the bump and so i didn't slow down i still had the momentum to go over uh, the uh, the drop and my rear wheel also took some uh, abuse there which was excellent Additional question, how to go about some obstacles while we ride up the hill? It might be some roots, it might be some little rock or some slippery part. How to do it in order not to lose the traction of your rear wheel? Sometime it will mean accelerating for a couple of seconds, maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Sometime it will also mean getting your front wheel off the ground going over the obstacle and then getting your rear wheel over it let's watch it And finally, when to get off the saddle. Situation number one, when you wanna attack somebody. It can be a race, it can be just riding with your buddies and having fun. Getting off the saddle means more power for a short amount of time. And it also means less efficient pedaling. But if you wanna attack, you're gonna attack mostly off the saddle. And situation number two is uh, you get off the saddle when you wanna change the way your muscles work. So if you really climb, 
a long climbs. If you are getting long hours, many hours in the saddle for that day, you want to get off the saddle sometimes. It's always different position for your body, for your core muscles, uh, for your arms and for everything. So just getting off the saddle for a couple of seconds, maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds once more will be okay. Do we always lose the traction on the climbs when getting off the saddle? Not necessarily. The center of our gravity uh, goes higher, but we still can balance with our body and get pretty good traction of the rear wheel. Time for a long technical climb. Let's do this, guys. So, the first thing you don't want to do is to go all out right at the bottom of the climb. Because if you do it, you're not going to be able to ride nice, smooth or fast at the top where perhaps you want to attack uh, other guys. Or if it's not a race, but it's a technical top of the climb you're not gonna have the power to accelerate and you're not gonna be able to go smoothly th through those rocks and roots here I've got some technical you see spots there is no other way but pushing much harder now you can hear me breathing that means it was a technical one. Now I can have a little bit of recovery and then it gets steep through the sand. So once more, keep your pace. Keep your pace, look ahead. And if you see it's gonna be hard up there, you just have to accelerate. You have no other options because you need momentum. So it's gonna be technical here and it's quite steep like this. Then I'm trying to go around some single roots, but if it's just roots all the way, I need to focus a lot and that's it don't go too hard from the bottom look ahead choose your line and push it when you really need it let's try this one here it's a single track right here with some little drops we're gonna climb it Hear me breathing? Yes, I am pushing. Now we've got some sand. We've got some loose rocks here. And now those steps here. Step number one. And then number two. And we're getting to the top. Whew. Beautifully made. Okay, this is 20% about incline. Don't start hard. I'm already on my lowest gear, trying to pedal as smooth as possible. My upper body is low. You can see my elbows bent a lot and that's it. Just find the right track and don't do this. Be efficient. <laughs> uh, Igor, uh, po prostu siedliśmy mu trochę na, na dumę. E, to się nazywa E Duma. No i teraz będzie jechał z turbo. Znaczy jechał już z turbo, ale no zobaczymy. No uwaga, Igor, ale, ale zredukuj już. Musisz mieć młynek. Musisz już mieć młynek. A ty nie masz młynka chyba w tym rowerze. Nie, nie, no jestem. Yeah. No In this way we got to the top of the mountain. Now we need to safely go down, but we want to have some fun with it.
So how to get down, how to descend with your bike. It's pretty much opposite to getting up the hill. So uphilling, climbing, we were moving a little bit to the front of the bike and leaning downwards. Going down the hill, we are moving to the back of the bike and we need to learn the attack position. But the most important thing I want you to remember from this video about going down the hill is what is the best suspension in the world? Is it RockShox? Is it Money2, RST, Fox or whatever? It is our body, guys. Really, our body, uh, our joints, our muscles linked to the brain, linked to the eye, eyes, to our side, is the best suspension in the world. That means we can anticipate what's ahead of us and we can react. The other thing is also what's the travel of your suspension? Is it 100 millimeters, 120, 160, 200? Now look at this suspension. A lot of travel, a lot of bio biomechanical travel which is the best thing in the world. And thus you need to learn the attack position. The attack position does not mean having your joints straight, it doesn't mean having your, your knees straight, it does not mean sitting on the saddle. Now, if we are just descending like 10 miles an hour on some gravel road with no roots, with nothing that could surprise us, yes, we can do that. But once the terrain gets a bit more technical and the speed gets higher, we need to learn the attack position. The attack position means that the center of our gravity is also bit lower that means more stability on the bike and much better speed on the corners this position also means the ability to lean the bike and not yourself what should we do when the things get really rough and the downhill the sand gets pretty steep because we are in the attack position it is easy for us to move the center of our gravity over the rear wheel our upper body will be close to the saddle. If you don't have a dropper post, more about it in a couple of minutes, your upper body will be close to the saddle. By doing this, you won't get so-called OTB, which means over the bar. And this is a very, very common beginner's mistake or beginner crash, that's OTB. If you don't train yourself to move back and forth on the bike as the terrain will, will require, it is really a common mistake. If you don't move with the bike, you can hit something with the front wheel or if the, the descent gets really, st uh, really steep, you can easily go over the bars. But here is one important thing. Once you learn to move your center of gravity over the rear wheel, it will be a completely new experience for you. Something that felt steep in the past will now be very, very easy. But we don't move our body to the back just so that we don't OTB. We do it so that we have the perfect traction of both wheels and the center of gravity where it should be. If you overdo it on some descents which don't really require moving so much to the rear, you are losing the traction on the front wheel, which is very important for the traction, for the braking. Okay, it's now time to experiment. Just go down the hill, not too fast, don't OTB and learn what the position does to the traction, traction of your wheels, to how stable you feel on the bike and to how, how much power you have on the brakes, both front and rear. My advice to you, my friends, is that you can get as close as I'm getting to the edge of this little rocky thing, because you don't really know how close you can get to it. And since I really love mountain biking and I want to do it for the whole life, when you start to feel fear, that's that's very good point to stop to say that's what I can do today. Tomorrow I'll be a little bit further maybe, but today that's it. Have fun, but don't try to break the fear. Oh. How fast you are in the terrain and whether or not you're gonna break the chain depends largely on the proper gear change.
The harder you pedal, the more tension you put on the chain, and that will make your rear derailleur work much harder. This is how to change the gears like a pro. The rule number one, change the gear before the obstacle, cornering, Jesteś czwarty. Masz 40 sekund straty. Dojdziesz, dojdziesz. Dajesz, dajesz. Acceleration. And before hitting a steep climb. Just listen to the sound of a proper gear change. And a lousy gear change. The rule number two, push the lever to a full nice click with some dynamic in this motion. The rule number three, if you have to change the gear while pedaling hard, for example on a long climb, Try to lower the power on the pedals only for that small amount of time when you shift the gear, hear the click and hear the sound of the chain engaging on the next sprocket. Remember, you generate the lowest power when your crank arms are positioned vertically. That might be a good moment for a shift. If your shifters allow to change multiple gears with just one push, Use that feature with caution, because that's the most difficult job for your rear derailleur and the cassette and the chain. If you're riding the tray you don't know, it is always better to hit the corner with a lower, easier gear than a higher, harder gear. If there is for example a climb just after that corner, it will be much easier for you to change the gear from lower to higher than from higher to lower. And finally, if you want to stop, you always change the gear from higher to lower. Make it your habit. <laughs> Braking. If you want to go fast through some technical stuff, you need to know how to brake. Hence, very important info, your bike has two wheels, the front wheel and the rear wheel, and so it has also two brakes, front brake and the rear brake. In order to brake safely and efficiently, you need to use both brakes at the same time. Many beginner cyclists are afraid to use the front brake, especially when you ride off-road, like on the gravel or some, some slippery rocks. But if you don't use your front brake regularly, that's the problem. Then when the emergency situation comes, you're gonna just slam your brake and go over the bars. Now I'm gonna prove to you how safe it is to use both brakes on different types of terrain. We are now on the stretch of the road which is approximately 150 meters long. I'm gonna just speed up without, without pedaling from the last tree on the right side and then start braking uh, just by the line I'm gonna make in a second. And then we do three options. Rear brake only, front brake only, both brakes and you will see the huge difference in the distance I'm gonna do while braking. Here we are guys, that's where I was starting to brake. This is the distance I made while braking with two brakes, so front and rear. Here I stopped by using the front brake only further and much further the rear brake only. So if some beginner cyclists use just one brake, that's the rear brake then, 
that's the distance. It's a huge difference in the, in the braking distance. You have much less safety, much longer braking distance, and also less, less traction. Here is the front brake. Here are both brakes. Guys, use both brakes. If you want to be braking efficiently, you need to know something about positioning your palms on the handlebars and on the braking levers. This is the perfect combination. Three fingers plus my thumb are around the handlebars. This is very safe uh, grip. Uh, I'm relaxed. I don't have to squeeze my, my uh, uh, fingers uh, um, around the handlebars and then just one finger, the indexing finger, is breaking. Now, if you cannot brake efficiently uh, with just one finger, that means your brakes are not efficient enough. The modern brakes should be so powerful so that braking just with one finger uh, will be enough. You can uh, make the test and try to carry some load with uh, three, like two fingers and the thumb and then the three fingers and the thumb and you will see that in this way you can carry tens of kilograms, in this way it will be much more difficult. So if you want to break with two fingers and have such a grip around the handlebars, you will get fatigued much quicker and you don't really need those two fingers right here. So three fingers plus the thumb and the indexing finger, finger here, that's the ideal position. And so try to break before the turns, before the obstacles, before some very slippery part of the track and usually avoid skidding. Here's the example of braking before the obstacle. In this case, these are some slippery locks. We brake before hitting the obstacle, then we release the brake, and if needed, you can continue braking after the obstacle. Riding through the demanding terrain like this cross-country race means constantly seeking traction without skidding. Some serious braking when your wheels don't have a lot of traction like slippery roots or mud or any wet condition on the track can mean that you lose the traction completely and then you crash. Mountain biking is such a cool thing. We've got uphills, we've got descents. What about riding off camber? Riding off camber is actually a great exercise because we need to be more flexible on the bike. So that's one thing you will learn. And the other thing also is uh, the traction of the rear wheel. You should be very careful uh, on what gear you have and how much power you apply to the pedals. Because once you apply too much power on the pedals, your rear wheel will lose the traction. And if you're riding off camber, that means the rear wheel will go down and your bike will stop. Don't worry too much. Your tires will normally have more traction than you think. Just don't do any crazy things. Try to go straight off camber and that's gonna be not only fun, but great experience.
Dos dedos. This was extremely difficult. Technical climb. It is very important for you to know that it's not necessarily just the technique that will allow you to climb such a technical uh, tracks or go down the hill, but it's also the line choice. It is super important that you that you are able to see which line will be less technical or less dangerous. It can be more um, advanced uh, physically for you, like this one here. You will see that I was trying maybe three or four times to go this line here, the right one, but there's many rocks and one, two, three of those are difficult for the rear wheel to go over. And so finally we found out that the left line will be much easier because there's less rocks but I have to push much more into the pedals because it's st steeper. It's always steeper on the inner side of, uh, of, the, um, of the corner. So the line choice is a great tool for you to just be able to ride pretty much anywhere you want. First off, think which line will be better, then try it. If you don't do it, try other line and then you will see which one will work better for you. As you can see, this is pretty nice track. We are going through some uh, forest trails, a nice one. There were some uh, descents, there were some uphills, not super technical ones. But if you only focused on the corners here, you could really make up a lot of time. And it was all about taking the corners wide. So wide, uh, wide enter into the corners and also the wide exit from the corner. All right, let's see what's happening right here. Most of the riders, we can see the tracks, are riding on the right side of this really wide uh, fire road. So this is the internal uh, track of this, of this corner and then they are going from the internal to the internal or to the external. I'm going really wide, so I'm, I'm coming to the corner from the left side, then I'm cutting the corner and then I go once more to the left side, so to the external one. The point here is we are not trying to find the shortest track, but the fastest line through the corner. When we compare six laps and me, myself, six times uh, going through those, those same corners, I'm not always being close to, to, to the perfection here, but uh, going wide through the corner, so just having higher speed than my competitors is always saving me a lot of time. Here we have yet another situation. Here is the technical descent, very, very short one. But once more you can see the tracks of most of the riders here. They are coming from the inside line and braking, so losing the speed and then uh, they, they uh, exit uh, the corner uh, on the right side, so on the inside once more. I was trying to just gain speed and keep the speed through the corner going from the inside to the outside here. Uh, maybe not each time I've been doing that was really good, but I would say four out of six laps I would really save time here. Now how does it work in really racing conditions? Uh, it's not like you will be just adding those seconds from the corner to the corner, but uh, the guys that lose the time on each corner they lose energy, they lose power in order to get back on your wheel. So I really, it's a really shame I didn't have my rear camera here because each time I could hear those really, really sprinting in order to get back to my uh, rear wheel and then on the next corner they would, they would lose it again. So really those, let's say, four or five corners on the six laps, that, that would give me like 20. 20 corners, about 20 corners, and a few seconds, four, five, six seconds on each corner. That means a lot of energy saved for myself and lost for my competitors. So I wish you would also play with this trick. It is really good one, a safe one, and will really work, work on the tracks which are full of different corners.
No i gdzie oni mi zjechali? Dobra, tu trzeba widzieć, tu teraz się zastanawiam. Zastanawiam się, które ende. I to mi czas zabiera. The mud. The mud creates two main problems while riding the bike. First off, it slows you down because it's buggy. And secondly, it will make turning and braking much more difficult. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the easiest advice about riding the bike through the mud is don't brake don't accelerate, don't make any turns. And that means try to ride your bike straight ahead and keep some nice pace by pedaling smoothly. So when you hit the muddy terrain, look ahead, pick your line and try to stick to it. Try to use a bit higher, so a little bit harder gear than normally that will help you with the optimum traction. Grinding through the mud is an excellent test of your balance and coordination. Exercise it by repetition. If you decide to walk through the most technical section of the muddy terrain and you use the clipless pedals, try to clean your shoes just a little bit so that the clipping in will be easier, but also clipping out will not be dangerous. The sand. Welcome you all guys. This is my area where there's lots of sand, there's lots of sandy trails. And this is my lovely Fuzzy. We've made some material for you with Fuzzy so that you know how to negotiate those sandy cross-country tracks, but also just some trails where you where you meet some this kind of ground, which can be demanding, challenging, but also so much fun. Two things to know. First off, much less traction and much higher rolling resistance. And so you need to learn three things. How to keep momentum, how to balance, and what gearing to choose. You need momentum on the sand because, uh, as I said, you have much higher uh, rolling resistance. Uh, the deeper the sand is, uh, the deeper your, your tires will go into the sand. The sand will try to stop you, as you can see here. So momentum is crucial. Uh, the thing is, you're gonna be afraid riding through the sand. You want to do it maybe uh, with the lower speed, but you need that speed. So you just need to break that thing in your mind. And instead of just slowing down here, you should go all out in order to, uh, to go through this uh, obstacle. It's not that uh, easy. So you need the second thing, which is balancing. Learn how to balance because um, that's why we're gonna be doing some mobility uh, exercises on the bike. If you can react to what crazy things your wheels can do on the sand, then you will be able to balance. You will be able to choose your line uh, and not be surprised. Like here on this corner, you can see, guys, where there's even a little bit of sand, this is the sandy track, this is the MTB Marathon, you don't lean yourself with the bike, you, you try to lean the bike only, but also not to do any crazy movement with your handlebars. You need to be very, very smooth, try to go straight if possible, 
because sand can be like ice once you uh, lose the traction. When you crash on the sand, it can really not be that soft uh, as, as it, it, it looks like. So first, a momentum, second, balancing, and third, right gearing. If your gearing is too low right here, you can see I'm grinding through it. I don't have the momentum. So your wheel should spin. Uh, you want to have traction on your re rear wheel. Now I'm showing you the, the low gearing, too low gearing. Just, just look how it, how, it, how it goes for me now. There's lots of grinding. You don't want to be doing that. And now I'm keeping the right gearing. So it's higher gear right now and it feels much better. So balancing, momentum and the gearing is something you want to learn, you want to think about uh, on the sand. And one additional thing uh, to have in mind, to keep in mind is when you are riding with other riders, so when there's, when there's plenty of riders riding through the same trail, they will leave some, some marks on the, on the sand and it's very good idea to ride through the one left by, by somebody just uh, ahead of you. But remember, it will be more difficult to keep balance. You're gonna be faster, there will be lower rolling resistance there. But uh, it will be more difficult for you to balance on it. Uh, and if the rider was riding straight, so if, if it was a good rider, an excellent rider, then you're gonna be fast as well. Just look at those um, cyclocross riders, they try to go through the same line and that's working well for them. It's time for the rocks and remember one main thing about them. The rocks are hard. And the trails full of rocks are no challenge for your mountain bike. Most of the rocks you're not gonna even notice. Yet, all the rocks that stand out from the ground, or the boulders, might be tricky. And so, avoid being tight on your bike, don't hold your handlebars tight. Think about suspension, your arms and your legs are a great suspension. You wanna be as smooth as possible on these rocks. It is very crucial that you read the terrain and choose the right line. Just as with the roots, you're gonna be able to avoid most of those dangerous rocks. Even some very experienced cross-country riders will always plan their line through the rock gardens. And then they analyze the video. And so, use your arms and legs as the suspension, try to ride smoothly, keep your pace, look ahead, plan the line, repeat. Riding through the roots can be a lot of fun, 
and your mountain bike is capable of doing it. If you're a beginner mountain biker, riding through the routes can be challenging for you. That's why it's good to know about these couple of things. First off, there are some routes that look dangerous, but riding through those can be very easy. These will usually be perpendicular to your track and you only have to be careful not to damage your tire or rim while riding through those. Other routes that will be easy for you to tackle are those you can fly over or simply avoid. The other type of routes are the ones really dangerous. Be cautious especially of those which are positions under a slight angle to the line you are riding. Those will try to push your front wheel off. <laughs> Can you see all these routes? Uh, this is like a slight descent with here maybe around 20-25 kilometers uh, per hour uh, of a speed uh, and that's where the full suspension bike will have the advantage because uh, some of these routes are actually pretty pretty deep or large uh, and they can really like change the, the, the line you are riding with your bike, can push you off the track even. Uh, so, full suspension bike here wins. If you can't go around or jump over the route, try at least to lift your front wheel. In that way you're gonna keep control of your bike and it will be easier for the rear wheel to navigate through the route. The lower speed is not always the better, sometimes you actually need to maintain the speed in order to keep the line you chose. And remember, hard braking on the routes will often mean losing traction. Let's sum up. Riding through the routes, look ahead plan your line, jump over the obstacles you can jump over or bypass those you can bypass. Otherwise, have fun! You can wheelie on pretty much any bike, full suspension, rigid, hardtail, city bike. We're gonna start with three tips on how to wheelie, which I haven't found on any wheelie tutorial online, which are crucial in my opinion. And then I'm gonna show you step by step how to do the wheelie process and there you're gonna find five tips. Tip number one, braking with one finger only and having all the rest fingers on the handlebars and some of you will probably think what does it have to do with riding on the rear wheel well you're gonna be repeating my exercises over and over again for seven days with some days off maybe and if you break with two fingers or three fingers it's gonna be super hard for you to keep balance and just have control over your handlebars because your fingers your your whole 
hands, your palms will be in pain. Tip number two, within those seven days of exercises, you're gonna need probably one, two or maybe three days off. How to decide when to take off? Well, when you feel that you are regressing, you don't have any more progress, uh, you, uh, your wheelie is shorter, more shaky, that means your, all your stabilizing muscles are just tired because they are not used to this position on the bike. So do day off, maybe after two days of exercises, day off, after another two days, day off. It's gonna boost your uh, wheelie learning a lot. Tip number three, extremely important. Uh, where should our focus be? Of course, on the, on, on the distance we wanna make, uh, but also what are we gonna use to steer the bike? The handlebars, kind of. Uh, our pedals and maybe the knees to balance, kind of, but the most important thing is our pelvis, our butt and the saddle. This is the place where we actually keep balance, but also when we tell our bike what to do. If you get your focus right there, you're gonna learn how to really 10 times quicker. All right, we're gonna turn to day number one and I know you're, you're excited about that. And so on day one, find the right place. It can be a tarmac road, if it's safe, uh, but some really smooth grass would be ideal. Some gravel kind of a fire road would be okay. But the important thing is that it's slightly on the slope. So you're gonna be going up the slope just a little bit, not to get too much tired, too, too, ti too tired, but just slightly up the hill. Why so? Because if, if it would be a, just a flat road, it's going to be much more difficult for you to balance back and forth because your, your wheel, your rear wheel will be just speeding up, speeding up, speeding up and then you are abusing the rear brake. If you're going slightly up the hill, just by applying a little bit more or less power on the pedals, you're gonna be able to find that balance. So the right slope and the right ground. Still day one, but tip number two, don't use clipless pedals. Tip number two, as I said, you can use any bike, but if you have many bikes, use the one with the shortest chain stay. So the distance between the axle of the rear wheel and your bottom bracket, the center of your bottom bracket. Also, if you have higher handlebars, it will be easier. If you have low handlebars, like very extreme cross-country bike, it will be a little bit more difficult, but still doable. Uh, but this distance, the, the shorter the chain stays, the better, because you're gonna sit lower and it will be easier for you to get the bike into the wheelie position. Tip number four, your seat height. I would recommend having uh, your seat height little bit lower than you normally use. You don't just slam the saddle completely down because then the pedaling won't feel very natural, but a little bit lower than you normally use uh, will help you with balancing because your center of gravity will be a little bit lower and the, the pedaling will still be quite efficient or comfortable. You don't need to use a dropper post. You don't need to buy a dropper post. No, just get your saddle like two, maybe three centimeters down. That's what you need to know in order to start learning wheelie day one. And then day two, you still focus on your sit bones on the saddle, but also try to see what's going on if you, um, if you uh, move your handlebars to the right and to the left. It will depend on the geometry of your bike and the weight of your front wheel and the fork, but also try to balance with your knees and see how it goes. Then try to combine moving of your handlebars and the knees, but first off, focusing on your pelvis on the saddle. After day two, you know everything you should know for learning how to wheelie. Some decisions to make right now is to choose the days off. Maybe after two days of training, uh, day off, and then after another two days of training, you need day off. You need to start uh, each lesson, each exercise with fresh muscles. If you are not fresh, just call it a day and go home because it will be very, very discouraging for you. Be fresh, have fun, that's what wheelie is all about. If mountain biking, then probably you will also consider buying clipless pedals. Why clipless pedals? What they give us, what they 
take of our ride. Maybe the second thing first. Disadvantage of the clipless pedals is that you don't have, you're not fully free uh, in the way how you put your uh, feet, your, your shoes on the pedals. And also in emergency situations, you need to have the technique, the skill uh, to dismount and just stop safely. But on the other hand, the clipless pedals will make you the rider bicycle combo, which can get so much faster through different obstacles. You can also be faster uh, on, on the climbs. So if you ride on the terrain regularly, something more than just the forest, maybe some, some trails, single tracks like this one, consider purchasing clipless pedals. They will be safe for you if you know these couple of tricks. Tip number one. If your clipless pedals do have the tension adjustment, set it to the minimum. That will mean that clipping in and clipping out will be easy. This is how the adjustment could look like. Shimano pedals, this is the XTR. Most, if not all of the pedals from Shimano will have two screws right there on both sides for both sides of the pedal because this part will clip or will, uh, will uh, keep your cleats in place this one and this one here you can see some small minus and plus plus means uh, more tension minus means less tension you just use small allen key i believe this is the three millimeters right here you see more tension less tension if you're a beginner just adjust it all the way to the minimum tension because uh, mounting and dismounting will be much easier it will be safer for you. There are also some special cleats for newbies, uh, but if you have just the regular one, it's okay. Just set it to the minimum. Tip number two. Sometime after purchasing your new shiny clipless pedals, don't go to some hard trails. I mean the trails which will require some sudden disengaging from your bike, because that's what can be challenging for you. Yes? <laughs> I powolutku, powolutku, pyk, pyk, tylko tutaj się zmieści na środku. O, 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 patrz, 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 patrz! Ale daleko, daleko pocisnąłeś. Da Sfilmowałem. No to ty. Dobra, jedzie Zibi. Jej, jej, jej! Zibi, wypinaj się zanim zaczynasz lecieć, błagam, już to widziałem tyle razy. And finally, exercise engaging and disengaging from your bike and it will become a habit for you after a week or two. It is time for some exercises that will teach you how to ride your mountain bike. Exercise number one, mobility on your bike. Choose some easy path with no obstacles, maybe going slightly uh, downward so that you don't have to pedal that much and swing on your bike from left to right. Try to keep your butt as low as possible. Why do we do it? Because uh, beginners uh, mountain bikers are quite stiff on the bike. This is the other uh, option you can, you can go for. This is swinging to the back, so moving your weight, your butt over the rear wheel, which helps you on the very steep descents. You want to learn that nothing really bad happens when you swing from left to right and if something happens in the terrain when, you, when your wheels start just slipping away you will be able to react because you know how to be, how to have that mobility on your mountain bike. And perhaps somebody will join you. Exercise number two, lifting the wheels. Lifting your wheels is the first step to, to jumping. As you can see, I'm just using some sticks, safe sticks, uh, which are about my bike distance apart. A little bit more, like one and a half bike length apart. What you wanna do here is to push the bike against the ground just before the stick so that you can lift the wheel. Don't try to force it, don't try to overdo it with your uh, clipless pedals, so don't really pull on the pedals. 
push on the wheel and now go up. That will be the first step to jumping and uh, the faster you do it, the more speed you're gonna have between those, the easier it will become for you to actually jump. You will actually notice you, you start to lift both wheels at the same time. Do it just as if you were jumping without the bike. Push against the ground first and then jump. And remember to post the videos on our Facebook group. Exercise number three, higher obstacles. We've, we, we had so much fun here. I'm saying here that the, the problem here is that when I hit the, uh, the obstacle with the rear wheel, I'm also hitting it with the front wheel. So I'm saying, I don't think I'm gonna make it, but we should me we shouldn't be doing that something is not doable. And that's how I did it. We were so happy having this this shot. As you can see, the the lock at the front just stopped me. I wanted to go, but my bike didn't want to go. It's so much fun, guys. So just train, just train. Try to do it as many times as possible. Uh, change the distance between those locks, and you will find yourself better and better in this. With time, you're gonna switch to some higher obstacles because that's now all about the rhythm. You, you need to know when to lift the front wheel and when to not maybe not lift but take your, your weight off the rear wheel when it hits the obstacle. It's so much fun. Approaching the logs, front wheel up, rear wheel up and now pushing the bike because I couldn't pedal there. Good shot. <laughs> Lift, push, and go. Exercise number four, tight turns, called slalom. Find some trees or other obstacles that might be rocks uh, on the on the ground or anything. You can mark something on the on the ground. The closer these are to each other, the tighter, the, the more tight the turns will be, and so you will you will learn the pivoting. Where are actually your bike uh, bike is pivoting while turning, and you will learn how how wide your handlebars are. Combining different obstacles, that's uh, exercise number five. Let's try to connect two obstacles, the off-camber and the roots here. Uh, these are icy slippery because we've been going through these many times. This was a, a marathon uh, race uh, right here, the track. So uh, the off-camber will already try to put me out of balance. And when I'm out of balance, hitting the roots, there's no chance I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna try to keep my line and keep keep my 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 pace, my speed not too high, just just not breaking, not really turning. And then when I hit these two here, I'm gonna lift the front wheel, and that's the spot where the front wheel wants to stop because we have another another corning. So balancing here is crucial because I'm gonna lift the front wheel and then I'm gonna apply a lot of power to the pedals so that I can keep my momentum through this one when the rear wheel hits it and then I'm gonna make it. Let's do this, let's do this. Yeah! So that was the first approach. Uh, it went very well going towards the camera, but the other the other way was so difficult. I wanted to go to the top of the, the this little hill. <laughs> Done. So at this point, guys, you need just one thing: patience. Be patient. Be patient, and repeat. I almost did it right now. Just almost, I stopped. Learning these exercises, doing these exercises will give you a huge advantage over your competitors during the race, especially cross-country races. 
marathon races uh, when, when people start to be very fatigued. I did it, yes. I found the place which was challenging enough and that's, that's what all, all the MTB drills are about. We did it. Exercise number six, try different trails. I found here very interesting part of the track. Um, there is some nice, like here, uh, drop on the roots. And the roots here are just all over. And these are like positions in, positioned in different uh, directions, which makes it very, very challenging. So find different places and try to ride through those in as many ways as you can as you can imagine like uh, going upwards downwards climbing uh, descending or as you can see I'm, I'm trying to find some some spots which could be challenging for me like doing this tight turn right here and going back to that drop but now uh, to, to the top it's great you will see that great cross-country riders can find super lines that, that somebody else would not see. And the places can be really beautiful. Balancing. I don't have to explain here anything. Just watch it. No bo już się ściemnia. Co się ściemnia? Uprościłeś to trochę. Możemy to uznać? <laughs> Na tym podjeździe mamy kilkaset y, mniejszych i większych a, kurde, głazów. Dobra, czekaj. <grym> Dobra. Ale rysa. O kurde. Dawaj. No,